Hey, Dr. Shook here. What I want to share with you guys is I read a recent study on the effects of low thyroid hormone, so T3, T4, um, with uh, in, in leaky gut. Okay, now this was actually done in an animal model, but I can tell you that we see this clinically, and other practitioners that I know that practice similarly to, to me, they see this same kind of thing clinically. We we know that there's a relationship. Um, as far as I know, there there has not been a study that's been done in a human model, uh, but this is in an animal model. What they what they found was this. They said that basically uh, lack of thyroid hormone stimulation to the the gastric lining. Okay, so your uh, the intestinal cells, the gut wall, all those things that it would lead to ulcerations or ulcers. Okay, and basically it would promote leaky gut or this concept of where the cells in the digestive tract are permeable or they leak proteins or partial proteins and uh, these things called lipopolysaccharides that are uh, endotoxins from bacteria and things into the bloodstream and they, they promote this inflammatory response and they can promote autoimmunity. Now, so what they found was that lack of thyroid hormone stimulation, we didn't necessarily say levels, we said stimulation, to, to those cells would basically cause permeability and ulceration. Okay, so that's really important. And if you think about it, it makes sense because I will tell you every single cell in your body has to have thyroid hormone, every single cell. If, if any cell is deficient in thyroid hormone, it will dysfunction. Okay, so if the gastric lining cells don't, don't have proper stimulation by the thyroid hormone, then it makes sense that those cells could degenerate and dysfunction. Okay, so you see stuff like leaky gut and ulcers where they don't repair and repair themselves optimally. Okay, they don't go through the cell division as efficiently. So another thing was that uh, they basically they basically looked at these ulcerations and um, like an endoscopic exam where they went in and they looked at these gastric ulcers and they found that basically low T T3 which is your which is the the thyroid hormone that's most physiologically active in your body is T3 and that low T4 and then abnormal levels of reverse T3 okay now I'm going to talk about that in a second. Um, that they were able to, they found that there was low T3, low T4, and abnormal levels of reverse T3. So um, suggesting it's higher on gastric ulcerative tissues. So ulcers. So they looked at these things, and they, and so what they, what they're saying here is this: low T3 and low T4 seem to be correlated and associated with those ulcers. Okay. Then high reverse T3 seem to be found in the area. So I'm going to tell you one of the reasons I get reverse T3 when I order panels is because I want to see, number one, inflammation can shunt and help to um, cause a conversion of T4 to more reverse T3. Okay, that's one thing I want to, so I want to know how much reverse T3 is there. Mainly because reverse T3, reverse T3 will also compete with your T3 for the receptor site on the cells. So if in the reverse T3's primarily inactive. So what it will do is it will take up the spot for the, the T3 and the T3 can't attach to the cell and can't stimulate the cell's physiology. So reverse T3 is important and we see inflammation and cortisol and then nutrient uh, deficiencies as well that will increase reverse T3. But there are some, there are some other reasons, but those, those are the most common ones functionally that we see. And I rarely see reverse T3 ordered. I rarely see it done. So uh, this is something that, you know, it's basically just telling us this that these tissues, which have a very high rate of turnover, need T3 and T4, and that it's it's more possible that this reverse T3 could be causing some problems, okay, and I can tell you at high levels that we see it clinically that it does, and, and that there's a relationship to this leaky gut phenomenon and your ability to recover in thyroid hormone physiology or thyroid hormone activity. So people want to know, you know, a lot of people ask me questions and they're like, well, you know, just tell me what diet to do. Just tell me what to do to get better. And I would love nothing more than to be able to tell you exactly what to do to get better. But you know what? <laughs> These things are all connected. So if your thyroid hormone physiology is not right and I tell you to eat, I mean, there are things that you could try, right, to just see what happens. But they're, you're asking for a definite answer when there's not a definite answer, when the answer is unique to you, okay? So I really want you guys to understand that. There's not, if I could pull out the crystal ball and say, look, this is your problem, this is what you need to do, I'd do that. But what you have to do is you have to know more about that person, you have to know more about their physiology, you have to investigate the drivers of the process. 
because everyone has unique drivers. So yeah, you can try stuff like a gluten-free diet, and that might be reasonable, and, and I've seen that help a lot of people, and that's a reasonable thing to try. But there are so many potential problems that are leading to this. You know, you, sometimes you have to address the thyroid more directly to get the gut to heal. Sometimes you address the gut and the thyroid improves. Sometimes you need to do both, right? So what we try to do is we try to, that's what I do in my practice. I try to help people figure out and investigate the drivers or causes of their web of, of dysfunction, their problems, their, their metabolic problems. And then we formulate, see if, you know, do I think we can help is the next, is the next question after we've investigated, do I think I can make a difference with this? And then once we have that information, if I think I can, I can help, then what we try to do is we try to put together a plan to address your unique drivers of the problem. Okay. That's what you got to do, guys. I mean, really, to get good answers, that's what you got to do. If you want to try a gluten-free diet, that's absolutely reasonable for a lot of people. And I've seen that I've seen that work miraculously for some people. So that's a reasonable thing to try. But there are all kinds of drivers of these processes. So if you want to save time and really money, and I mean, really, the thing comes down to it is time. I mean, how much time do we really have? You know, we don't know how much time we have here, you know, on this earth, and we don't you know, what kind of quality of life do you want? So I tell people all the time, I, you know, my practice has evolved to this point where, you know, people have tried dietary approaches, you know, or they want to save time and money. They were tired of being tired. And so that's what I try to help people figure out is like, all right, let's investigate the drivers of this process. And then let's see if we can't formulate a plan that makes sense based on your unique drivers. So I just want to share this with you guys because people are like, well, all I need to do is heal leaky gut. Well, maybe not. Maybe not. What if it's a thyroid physiology issue that's being driven by uh, by autoimmunity? Might healing or supporting your leaky gut make a difference? Maybe. But they're like, well, so I'm just going to work on leaky gut. Well, what if your leaky gut's being driven by a bacterial imbalance in the gut or by a parasite in the gut? Or, um, or maybe it's being driven by environmental chemicals that you have in your body that are triggering an immune response. You know, or... Um, you know, maybe you have yeast overgrowth. Maybe you're exposed to a fungus. Maybe you're, maybe you live in a house that has mold and you're getting exposed to the mold, right? And, and that's triggering an immune response. So it doesn't matter how much you work on the gut or what these other things that you do, your unique drivers are unique to you. You know, so there are things that can, that you can try. Absolutely. And that's not unreasonable. But if you want to be specific, if you want to save time, and then, then you need to investigate the drivers and have someone help you test to figure out what's pushing the problem. Okay. So I'm Dr. Shook. I just want to share that with you guys because just remember everything is connected. And I and that's that's the absolute truth. When we try to look at systems in this tunnel vision, you know, of just the nervous system or just the, the cardiovascular or just the digestive, man, that's just not how the body works. The systems work together. Cytokines, inflammatory chemicals and these other things cross talk. We've got all this complex stuff that's happening and you have to appreciate that. And if you don't, you're going to be missing the picture. Okay. So anyway, I've gone on long enough on this one. I hope this helps you guys. If you have any questions or anything, let me know. Um, you can just post your comments below or just contact us and we'll do the best we can to help you out. Okay. Thank you guys for watching. Hope you have a wonderful day.